You're listening to the Intuitive Souls Podcast. I am your host, Tara Caruso, and this podcast is designed to educate, inspire, and enlighten. Let's wake up together. Hey guys, and welcome to the Intuitive Souls podcast. How are you? God, I don't know if you guys can notice this, but I am using my new fancy dancy podcast equipment and I feel like I am Ryan Seacrest <laughs> because I have this big thing right in front of me. I wish like I could like show you guys, but it's it's going to get some getting used to, but I hope that the audio is better for you guys. We're moving on up here at the Intuitive Souls podcast. So yeah, all good things, all good things. So before we dive into today's episode, I asked uh, my friend Ashley to come on. She is a human design expert, guys. Like no joke, I have been hearing about human design for like a while now. And I never really, I was like, Oh, that's interesting. Like, you know what I mean? I'm always, I am a student of life guys. I love learning about everything, different healing modalities, different types of readings that you can get. I mean, I am just a sucker for everything. And I finally pulled the trigger and I got a reading for human design. And when I tell you the whole 50 minute session, I was just like, she was basically showing me my chart and I was just like jaw dropped because everything she said was me. Everything, even to the way I think and I live my life and how I have to question everything and how I use my intuition on an everyday basis, like it was just mind blowing. And it's just such a nice reassuring thing to let you know like, hey, your your stuff, all your quirks, you were made this way. You were born to be different. You were born to be unique and to embrace everything about you. So it's such a beautiful experience. So I had to bring her on and she does such a great job talking about the different types and all of that because human design is very complex. <laughs> if you don't like, we'll talk, we'll definitely dive into it um, more in the show, but it's super complex. And like, you can go and get your own personal chart online. She gives you a website, um, to go do that, but it's very hard to understand. So I asked her, you know, she teamed up and she is offering all of my listeners 50% off a reading. All you have to do is head on over to Instagram, check her out at human design with Ashley message her, say that you're an intuitive, intuitive souls listener, and she's going to give you 50% off a reading. So that would just like super generous. Thank you for that, Ashley. But before we dive into that, guys, I also just want to thank each and every one of you. I have been getting a lot more reviews on this podcast on iTunes. And like, every time I read them, like I get so choked up because you guys are saying such kind words, and you're just making this so fucking easy for me to do. And you guys are inspiring me and empowering me to just keep on giving you the value, keep on giving you, um, you know, resources and tools for your journey. I mean, thank you guys so much. And if you are enjoying this podcast and it's bringing you value, it's teaching you something, head on over to iTunes and write a review. But before you submit it, I want you to go ahead and take a screenshot and send it to me at hello, H-E-L-L-O, at Erica Russo, E-R-I-C-A-R-U-S-S-O dot co, no M. And I'm going to send you my soul alignment activation for free just as a thank you because you guys are just fucking awesome. So let's head on over to the show. I know you guys are going to love it and I will see you soon. Hey guys, today I'm really super, super pumped about this because I don't know if you guys have been following me on Instagram. If not, if you aren't following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. But I recently got my human design chart read by Ashley, who is sitting here with me. And I had, I was blown away by the answers guys. And I don't, and I'm pretty like even Steven, but like the whole time she was doing my reading, I'm just like, my jaw was 
wide open. So I had to bring her on because we have to talk about human design. Ashley, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm very, very excited for this. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your story and how you learned about human design? Yeah, it's actually, it's a funny story. It's very um, millennial of me, I guess. And I don't even know <laughs> millennial, but um, I had a personal Instagram account that I was just sharing on and a friend DM'd me one day and she said, are you a projector like me? I was like, I don't even know what that means. Um, she's like, it's human design. Just Google it and get your chart and tell me what it says. And so I did. And uh, I was a projector and she's like, oh, it makes so much sense. You've been struggling with some of the things that projectors tend to struggle with. And so like in that moment, I fell so deep into the human design hole and like was listening to podcasts and Googling everything and watching YouTube videos. I bought all the books and just kind of, uh, spiraled in the best way from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but my my story is I have a master's degree in psychological counseling and I worked as a therapist for a few years um, doing family therapy and got burnt out really, really quickly because it was a lot of very sad stories. Um, I yeah. was at the nonprofit dealing with like trauma and abuse and neglect and things like that. So um, I got burnt out and decided I would start my life coaching business because I was like, it's very similar to therapy, you know, like I can still work with people when I'm one and I can help them have a better life, but not deal with the, the, the very, very uh, intense, serious yeah. things. So I started a coaching business online and did that for a couple of years. And th I mean, that's just evolved. That was 2012 when I started. So um, my online business has taken many different shapes and forms over the years. Uh, and back, it was the end of 2018 is when my friend sent me this DM and I was going through uh, somewhere between a quarter life and midlife crisis, <laughs> I mean, um, trying to figure out like what my next evolution was going to be. And that's when human design fell into my lap. And in that moment, it's like everything clicked. It all made sense. I felt so validated and like understood it, like it gave me permission to be myself like all these things yeah. that I felt were wrong with me um and I was like people need to know about this so I started my Instagram account and then as, as I learned more I started doing readings and then leading group programs for people to dive deeper so that's what I do now awesome so the what exactly is human design yes if you're just brand new to it it's probably going to be very overwhelming so the simplest way to understand it is that it's a synthesis of different ancient and modern sciences. So it combines astrology, the Kabbalah, the chakra system, and the I Ching, and then also uses like biochemistry and quantum physics and things like that to give you a really cool like chart based off of your birth information. So it's all based on your birth time, your birth date, and your birth location. So your chart is never going to change, which makes it like it's different than personality tests where you can like guess like on the Enneagram, like, oh, I think I'm a three wing four or like I'm an INFJ on Myers-Briggs, but that can shift over time versus human design is like your chart's never going to change. It is what right. it is based off of your birth information. And it tells you all sorts of fun things about yourself. Yeah. Fun and crazy accurate. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> like crazy accurate. So, you know, when we're talking, you're, you're talking about like certain, the certain types. So you're a projector, I'm a manifester. Yeah. So in human design, like the foundational piece is that there are five types and you are one of the five types. So there's a manifester, a generator, a manifesting generator, a projector and a reflector. Okay. Okay. Wait, I'm a manifesting generator, right? Uh, are you a manifester? I thought, let me pull up your chart again. <laughs> I know that I was like something, I know that I'm not a projector. I know I'm either a manifester or a manifesting generator. Oh, my notes are only on your channels. Hold on. <laughs> We should have done this before. We should have. We should have. When I tell you, like, I just recorded another podcast and it was like another like impromptu thing. So it's all good. Don't worry I'm, about I'm it. I'm pretty sure you're a manifester as I'm remembering our reading and the things that we were talking about. Okay. I'm, I'm looking it up, but it'll just take a second to load my, the software that I use. Okay. So while we're loading the software, what, tell me about the different types and some of the, um, 
clues as to what type you might be. Yeah. So when you get your chart, which you can get at several different places for free online, one of the places is Jovian Archive, J-O-V-I-A-N-A-R-C-H-I-V-E, or there's another place called mybodygraph.com where you can get your chart and it will tell you exactly what type you are. So you'll be one of those five types. And as you learn what type you are, it tells you more information about yourself. So manifestors make up about 8% of the population. So they're pretty rare. And manifestors are the people who are here to get things started. So they initiate things. They're very creative people. They're here to kind of be the leaders, um, start movements, be the trailblazers. Uh, for example, one of the most like well-known manifestors was Hitler, right? He was somebody oh who was like very charismatic and had this idea and started this movement that like changed the world. Yeah. So manifestors have a very strong aura about them and each of the five types has a different kind of aura. So um, manifestors are like the jump starters of the world. Okay. Wow. So let me, the software is here. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the projectors, what are they? Yes. Oh, you are a manifesting generator. So we'll get to that okay. in a second. Okay. So projectors are about 20% of the population. That's what I am. And projectors are here to be the guides. So projectors tend to have like a, a higher, wider viewpoint of the world. So we see how things work. We can see if people are making mistakes. Um, we have a very like penetrating aura and that we can see very deeply into people and understand them and how they work. Um, and each, each of the types also has what we call a strategy, which is how you interact with people. And the projector strategy is to wait for the invitation, which if you are a projector, that's going to be really, really hard for you because projectors are the, the kids really who are known as being bossy or like, um, <laughs> the know-it-alls and it's because we can see so deeply into things like we get things really really quickly but our strategy is to wait because if we don't then we come across as bossy and a know-it-all right we have to wait for people to ask for our opinion to ask us for advice and then once we give it then that's when we're really uh, like seen for who we are and recognized and um, our gifts can really be appreciated by other people yeah absolutely so then we have so we have the manifestors, manifesting generators, and the projectors, and then what else? So the first type we talked about was manifestor, which is 8%. Projectors are 20% of the population. The majority of people are going to be a generator or a manifesting generator. And okay. they make up about 70% of the population, these two groups. And they're very, very similar, except the manifesting generator does have a few qualities from a manifester in that they can initiate things sometimes. It gets a little bit complicated, but basically these two groups, they're here to be the builders. They're the little worker bees. And this doesn't mean you like work yourself into the ground, but once you find something that you love to do, like you can work nonstop. Like you can work 14, 16, 18 hours a day when you're yes. doing something that you love. Like you have that energy within you to keep going, like the little energizer bunny. Very true. Yeah. Which is like a projector and a manifester don't operate that way. Like that's not yeah. how they're built. Yeah. I, I, yeah, my, I have a friend, um, Hannah, who is a projector and she says like, she works best in like a couple hour clips. Mm -hmm. Like she needs breaks and, and yeah, I definitely see that. So what are the tips that you can give someone? Because I looked, I looked at my human design chart before I got a reading with you and I had absolutely no idea what I was looking at. I was like, what is this? <laughs> it was, it was, and I did go, I went to the Jovian archive, um, website. I had no idea what I was looking for. What I, I just had no clue. So what are a couple of tips that you can give someone to have them understand their chart if they're going to go and try to do this on their own? Yeah. It's, I mean, it is super overwhelming when you first pull up your chart. You're like, oh, there's all these numbers and, <laughs> and colors. And like, what am I looking at here? So it's when you're first getting started, none of that really matters. Like the foundational pieces that you want to pay attention to are your type, which we just talked about, which and reflectors are the last ones we didn't touch on. They're just 1% of the population. So they're very, very rare. And they're basically here to be mirrors for the rest of us. So they show us how well 
the world is operating around it. So if a, if a reflector is really uh, frustrated, then you can tell like something's not right if, within their world. But if they're thriving, then you know that whatever's happening around them is, is in alignment, it's on track, it's going great. Um, so the first thing that you really wanna tune into is your type. So like which of these five types are you? Then you wanna pay attention to your strategy, which your chart will also tell you. And then you wanna pay attention to your authority. And your authority is how you make decisions. And there are seven different types of authority. But I recommend like spending at least a year like experimenting with these three pieces, your type, your strategy, and your authority. Because if you don't really nail those in and feel really solid within them, then the other pieces of your human design chart are just like, sugar they're just like icing right they're not actually right. going to make an impact on your life if you don't have the foundational pieces there so does that help a little bit i think that definitely helps <laughs> so i think that definitely helps so it is um repeat those again so i can write them down in the show notes <laughs> yes so you want to you want to make sure you understand your type like which of the five types you are and then your strategy which is like how you interact with the world. So we didn't dive too much into that, but a manifest or your strategy is going to be to inform. So you are here to get things started. So you can make decisions, whatever you want to do, like go ahead and do it. If it lights you up, yes, do it. But once you've decided before you take action, you want to let people in your world know. You want to tell them, you know, this is what I decided, this is what I'm going to do, and then you can go ahead and do it. If you don't do that, you're going to upset a lot of people. You're going to, uh, people will feel like you're trying to control everything, or people will try to control you, and then you'll get frustrated, so mm -hmm. the dynamics will be all out of whack there. So the manifestors, you need to inform people. The generators and manifesting generators, your strategy is to respond which a lot of people tend to get that confused and they think that means you just sit back and wait, but that's not the case at all. It's like you are responding to life as it shows up in front of you. So the best analogy that I heard for this is like you're at a wedding and the waiter's coming around with like a tray full of appetizers and you get to choose like, do I want this one? Yes or no. Do I want this one? Yes or no. And you choose as life presents itself to you. So like, do I want to have eggs for breakfast? Yes or no. Do I want to wear the pink shirt today? Yes or no. So you're constantly responding to the stimulus in front of you. Love and you're, the manifesting generators and generators have what we call a sacral center within their chart. And if you're looking at your chart, that's going to be the red square that's second from the bottom. And within that center, you have this gut response. You have this like, it's like a uh-huh or uh-uh or a yes or a no which we always recommend like asking yourself and having people around you ask you yes or no questions because it's going to trigger that sacral response within you which is how you respond so right that's the strategy for them for projectors your strategy is to wait for the invitation which we kind of touched on and then reflectors have a, a really really challenging one in my opinion they're supposed to wait 28 days because their chart, if they look at it, it's going to be completely white. There's going to be no color on it, which means they have no what we call definition in human design. So the purpose of waiting 28 days is so that the moon can go through the full cycle and they can get a feeling based on like everything being activated within their chart and then they can move forward with something. So of course, if wow. you're a reflector and like, you have an instantaneous gut response to something then go ahead and move forward. But if you don't, or if you're questioning yourself, like maybe experiment with waiting the 28 days and see if that helps you. Oh my God. I'm definitely not a reflector. <laughs> <laughs> 28 days. Wow. That's crazy. But I know people that are like that. You know what yeah. I mean? That they really need to sit on things and analyze it and like feel the feelings. So I, wow, 28 days. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, the cool thing about human design is that it, it tells you these things about yourself. So maybe somebody's listening and let's just say, for example, they're a generator, but they are this person who feels like they have to wait forever to make decisions. Then we could say, well, in human design, that would be called conditioning, right? That's the outside world conditioning you to be a certain way, but that's not actually how you were designed. So now you can look at your human design chart and say, okay, well, my strategy is actually to respond based on my sacral center to yes or no questions. 
and you can experiment with that and like try that out for a month and try like making decisions that way versus waiting 28 days before you decide anything and just see how it works for you. Right. And the funny, this is, we spoke about this in my reading where she was basically telling me the whole time she goes, you live your whole life with yes or no questions because I'm a manifesting generator. Yeah. Um, you know, my sacral, my sacral is very, very strong. Like that's my powerhouse. And I just live my whole life intuitively. I don't know how to explain it. And I, and the way she was like describing it to me with, was like, that, that's my brain. That's like how I work. That's exactly how I work. You know, I, I have to ask questions. Am I going to put this in or that in? Am I going to do that or that? And it's just so, um, see, like, did you just, <laughs> I got a message come up. Like, this is how improv, like, this is, oh my gosh. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So it's so true. I, I was just like mind blown because it, it was just like, wow, I'm supposed to be this way. I'm supposed to question this. I'm supposed to just live my day, you know, asking the questions and, and getting the answers and stuff. It's not just me being me. Right. Yeah. You know, the last, so. the last piece that, um, I would recommend people start with is their authority, which is how you make decisions and your chart will tell you this and you'll be one of seven different authorities, um, which we don't have to dive into all of them today, but the main ones are sacral authority, which is the yes or no. And then emotional authority, which is from your solar plexus center. And these are people who have very strong and intense emotions. They have like an emotional wave, these highs and lows. So for these people, we recommend not making decisions in the moment, but sleeping on it, like waiting at least 24 hours so that you can feel the highs and lows of your emotional wave and then get to a calm place before you move forward with something. Because otherwise you're going to want to jump into things when you're on an emotional high and then jump out of things when you're at an emotional low. So mm. ride that wave, get it to a calm place where you're about 80% sure and then yeah. you can decide. Um, so that's yeah. going to be like 70% of the population is either going to have sacral authority or emotional authority. And that's their, that's, yeah, like absolutely. I've learned with me is like, yeah, I do, my emotions are either very high or very low and I have to always have to take a step back and like do any sort of rational decision making when I'm in a calm place, yeah. you know, yeah. it's really super important. And, and cause I mean, we, it has to be, I think what I'm talking about, like sacral people is that when we have a gut instinct, we think we have to do it immediately. Mm -hmm. For me, like that's just me. When I get an idea or something like that, I feel like it has to be done immediately. And I realize that it doesn't have to be, it, right. it, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be, you can take that information and just kind of sit with it and allow it to like simmer a bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say like, especially like since you run a business, here's a great example. So you have, let me look at your chart. You have sacral authority. Yes. Okay. So if you get this like gut response, like, yes, I want to do this for my business. Like I want to start a podcast mm -hmm. for your chart. We would say you're a manifesting generator. You're not meant to initiate immediately like a manifester, right? You're not meant to put it into action. So we say, okay, write that idea down, tuck it away, put it on the back burner and wait for life to bring something to you for you to respond to. So maybe it's like a client says, hey, I'd really love a podcast for you, like for you to start a podcast or you're having a conversation with a friend and she says, you know, you'd be really great. You should start a podcast. Like some other like stimulus in yeah. your life is going to bring it back to you and then you're sacral will say yes or no and you can move forward so it's that's, not like that's a hundred percent accurate that is like so i had this idea of this podcast literally in the back of my mind for a year for a year and i had to have somebody else come to me and be like you should just start a podcast like you would just be so good at it and it was with that where i was like okay that's my sign that's my sign i'm gonna do it yeah. so that's so that's so true i love that so if you can give three pieces of advice to anyone listening who is wanting to learn more about who they are or who is wanting to jump into the spiritual or personal development game, what would you tell them? Yeah. So the first thing that comes to mind is to experiment with it. Like 
do what works for you because it's not a one size fits all, like nothing is. You have to try it out and see what works for you and take the pieces that work and leave the pieces that don't. Like for me, this is one of the reasons I love human design is because it does, it works for me, but it's also, it's been so uh, reassuring for me because I feel like I live in the online business world. Like so many of the coaches out there and the teachers, they have these strategies that they teach and like you've got to hustle and this is what, what works and it might work for them. But for me as a projector, it doesn't work for me. Like I've tried it and it just burns me out and I get so exhausted and I don't see the results that I'm looking for. And so human design has been like, well, obviously, because that's not how you're designed, right? Right. The majority of the world is a generator, a manifesting generator. So what works for them, is not going to work for me as a projector. So um, yeah, that's my first tip is like, experiment try things out and see what works and if it doesn't work just leave it and walk away like when we're talking about human design it's meant to empower you and support you and not limit you in any way so if you feel limited or restricted then um, maybe that just doesn't work for you and that's okay um yes second thing i would say is to be gentle with yourself um I am a very impatient person. I like to see results immediately. Like in the personal development world, I'm like, all right, I'm going to read this book and I'm going to do it. It's going to change my life. Um, and just like, remember that not everything happens overnight and you are doing a good job, right? Again, like it's every day you're laying a brick and eventually the house will be built. Like you are making progress. You just have to keep going and not beat yourself up because it's not happening tomorrow. Right. So, that's a message to myself. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then the third thing I guess would be to celebrate, like anytime you do see growth or you have a win, like celebrate, have a glass of wine or buy yourself a new pair of earrings or something like do something to celebrate and enjoy the process because that's the whole point is like, it's a never ending journey. So if you're not having fun and enjoying and celebrating along the way, then what are you even doing? Absolutely. Yeah. That, and that's something, the whole celebration thing for me is definitely something I realized as a manifesting generator that I have to do too, mm-hmm. because I just, I'm a very goal oriented person and it's like, I have to achieve so much in order for me to, you know, take a look back and see if everything that I've already accomplished. Mm-hmm. And I'm realizing that I have to do that more. Yeah. This you know? is, I just looked at your chart again. So you have what we call a defined heart center. Mm-hmm. So your heart chakra is colored in, um, which only about 30% of the population has that colored in, but I do too. So it's really funny that we're both here. <laughs> so if you have a defined heart center, it means that you are very goal oriented. You're very driven. You do what you say you're going to do. You love to see results and like make things happen. So for those of us who do, like, I would say, yes, celebrating is even more important Important. because you, like, once you hit the goal, you're going to want the next thing. Yeah. Your eyes always going to be on the next thing. So taking a moment to celebrate is crucial. And for those of you who do not have a defined heart center, uh, you are not meant to be as goal oriented and driven. So again, like it goes back to like giving yourself grace, like not pushing yourself, not like thinking you have to prove yourself because with an open heart center, you, you're worthy just as you are. You have nothing to prove here. So, um, you don't have to keep forcing that. Yeah. No, it's definitely, that's something. Yeah. I mean, I'm so happy that there's like <laughs> that the, the human design exists because it is, it's, I realized my whole life, it's always been, I've never given myself enough credit for all of my accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Like, and it wasn't until like, you know, I started really diving into my spiritual and personal development where I realized like, wow, I've already done a lot. Like I've already manifested a lot. I've already really accomplished Mm -hmm. a lot of things that I wanted to accomplish. And I never bought some Prosecco and enjoyed it, Yeah, you know? So, and guys, Ashley is being a super sweetheart and she is giving all of my podcast listeners 50% off a reading with her. You have to just head on over to Instagram and DM her there. Her Insta name is human design with Ashley. What you can do is if you are following me, I follow Ashley. So make sure you go to my page, follow me, and then go ahead and follow Ashley and book a reading with her. I'm telling you, it's so well worth it. I was just like, 
you, I, I feel like for me, I need to learn it from somebody else. <laughs> um, and then I can understand it better. I can't, I, I need to see it. I'm a, I need to visualize it and stuff. So her reading is really good. She's a wealth of information when it comes to this stuff. So Ashley, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for giving us a, a little taste of human design because I just, I am so obsessed with this now. Oh, you're so welcome. I hope that your listeners enjoyed this. And if you're listening, just so you know, we touched on like the very tip top of the iceberg. <laughs> Human design is, it goes so deep and it's so intricate and like personal to you. This was just like the basics. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like you, I know you went from like, when she was doing my reading guys, like she went from one screen to another and I'm like, oh my God, like what am I looking at right now? But it's so awesome. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Ashley, again, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me.